Well, good morning, Jackson and West Tennessee. We are back home. Got a little background interference going on right now, but yeah, we do. That's uh, okay. We're glad to be back in downtown Jackson this morning. Uh, back home, we're back on 101.5. Yeah, it's a homecoming day, man. That's right. Yeah, yeah. and I've, I'm behind the big board. I, I feel know. I feel like a little bitty fish in a great big pond right here. Yeah, on the well. Road. Uh, Jimmy, you got promoted down here. I guess I like. did. Yeah. I, I guess I did. And uh, we remember the uh, the text line is uh, is open, and the uh, phone lines are open. We got a choice for you now that we're down downtown, back at uh, at uh, Grace Media Group headquarters, worldwide headquarters. The uh, phone lines four two three eight one zero one. That's the seven three one area code. Or if you're outside the area, one eight hundred three zero four one zero one five. That's easy to remember. Or the text line seven three one two seven seven five one five five. Or four one zero seven five six zero. That one is familiar from uh, what we were been. We'll uh, we'll uh, come into uh, to the board, and uh, we've got a, a text up here. Uh, first thing up, it says, where is John Allen? Well, I think that's him over here to my left. That's me, yeah. <laughs> uh, not on 93.1 this morning. No, nope, we, we at we, 101. Uh, coming back home, 101.5. So uh, just turn your little knob there a little bit, and you'll find me. Yep. And uh, we'll uh, we'll take it from there. So, you know, if you and got this, something. This will, this will be the permanent spot from this point on. We're making some, some programming changes moving some things around to try to get everything like we want it with uh, the Grace Media Group stations. And uh, this this uh, show started back about 25, 26 years ago, there, thereabout, somewhere. Yeah, it early 90s. That? Yeah. So it's it's back home. And uh, this is where the uh, tricks of the trade will be uh, from, from this point on. It'll be here at 101.5 on Saturday morning. Yeah, we'll Same be, time. We'll, uh, we'll be uh, having a few announcements here and there, people that are regular listeners, to kind of let them know where we are. And uh, hopefully things will get built back up pretty quick, and uh, we'll be ready to take phone call. The numbers are the same. I mean, when you said 4238101, yep, I remember that. That sounds one. familiar, yeah. Texter, yeah. The uh, texter that asked where is John Allen says, found him. Found him. There we go. <laughs> You can Thank run, you, but you can't hide. That's right, boy. <laughs> you know, we thought we were going to get down here and and hide from everybody. That didn't that didn't happen. So, uh, yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be uh, learning the equipment. This is this is my first go around here uh, with uh, running the big board. I've been shadowing uh, Mike Doles for the last couple of days this week, and I think I know where all the buttons are. I just got to remember to push them at the proper time. So. Yeah, you know, everything's good. I just feel back home. The coffee's <laughs> better. Yeah. You know, yeah. they've uh, remodeled the bathrooms, I see. I think we got a new mint in the urinal in there. Oh, really? I, yeah, I didn't, you know, really it, it doesn't smell attention. as bad as it used to when I was here. Uh, we, we still got a little powder trail over in the corner of the carpets from – where they didn't vacuum just right, but you know, <laughs> it, it's okay, and, and uh, I feel good just to fuss about it. Yeah, that's true. That, that this is the white glove service from John H. Allen that, Company. <laughs> <laughs> we will inspect your house too. You know, and, and, and if, if 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 the coffee gets low, I'll put the Folgers can out on the windowsill, <laughs> let somebody come drop a nickel in, and we'll yeah, get another pot down there, man. Yeah, yeah. John Rawl is here. We're live on uh, y'all dot com this morning. Uh, he followed us down here, and uh, everything everything's looking good, and we appreciate what he does for us here on this, yeah, this show. And, uh, it's Y A L L no apostrophe folks dot com, and you got us. You get to see what's going on. We're right next door to the farmers market, mm -hmm. and uh, you know there's always a lot of good things, a lot of good people down around this way on Saturday morning. Yep. So uh, may have to make a donut run before I go home. Oh, they are the best. I know. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, no. I got I to tell a little story on one of my grandchildren. I, uh, that they come down to the farmer's market about every Saturday or so. Yeah. And and Miss Lucy was uh, toddling along behind Josh, you know. And, <laughs> Watch uh, out for that one. That's right. <laughs> and he turned around, and she was just gnawing down on a tomato. <laughs> I mean, Bought the one. juice was running all the way down. The front of her her little top, and she was loving that tomato. And then she'd get her another one, and all this unbeknownst to Josh. And uh, there was these two little ladies that was behind Miss Lucy watching the whole thing, and they right. were just dying laughing, oh, you I know, bet. watching that little two year old snatch them <laughs> tomatoes 
<laughs> and uh, and eating them like it was an apple, you know. You know, she's got the, she's got the buying part down. She just hasn't got the paying part down. Just that's yet. right. That's right. She figured that daddy's with me. He'll take care of business. That's what they all think. The Romans still think that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I get, we we talk about the youngins nowadays because we can, and we're older. But I I'm wondering sometimes if we were just as bad or worse. In some uh, ways. Well, you know, you know, it's just all in perspective. I'm just glad they're around, you know. Oh, man, That's me all, too. You know, me it, too. It, uh, you know, growing up, used to, it, and, and your parents were a lot of times out of town, and you were in a different town, mm-hmm. and you'd have to go visit and stay and all that stuff, but I feel kind of fortunate. Everybody's here in Jackson. And, oh, me too. You know, yeah, yeah mine, uh, mine are uh, uh, 10 minutes away, you know, if, if we need something or if they need something, we, you know, we, we're there. And my, uh, my great granddaughter, which you don't, you haven't taken that step yet. That's right. And I've got, I've got a great now. She's seven, seven months old. You've got a Maddie in your family. I have a Maddie in mine. Yours yeah. are with D's and mine's with T's. There you go. But I got a new picture of her yesterday. She's got, she's cutting her first teeth and it's getting interesting around their mm, house. Slobber yeah. time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You're listening to Tricks of the Trade. We are at 101.5, our original home and our new home. So uh, check us out here and pass the word around if you don't mind. This is the first time we've, uh, we've done it uh, from here. So, uh, we got a phone call coming in over Jim. I believe we do. You're right. right. Hang on. Just let me see if I can get this to work here. Uh, let's do that right there. Good morning and welcome to Tricks of the Trade. Hey, good morning. Hey, how are you? All right, all right. Welcome back. Hey, thank you. Hey, 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 Jimmy, you should have broke out with that welcome back, uh, uh, welcome back Carter. From. Yeah, I should have, I should have done that. I, I, I haven't found the music button up here yet, though. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. I, I got a question for Mr. John. Yes, all right. Sir. Okay, look, uh, the city is getting ready to come out uh, and install a clean out, clean out for the pump, pump and sewer system. Uh, I guess for the you know uh, toilet or whatever. Uh, my question is, uh, during that process of them putting the clean out in, uh, I want to get it. As close to the sewer lines as possible at the rear of the house. Okay. Now, the guy, he already came out a couple of times, and we talked and everything. And I live on a dead-end street, but he he says that uh, he wants to put it at the front of the house. Uh, He said he might have a problem with his equipment, but my neighbor next door... uh, uh, is willing to allow his equipment to come down his driveway and around the house to get to the side of my house. Uh, I think it can be done where I want it, but uh, your opinion, won't that make a difference if the clean out is uh, uh, 50 feet away from the sewer, from the, uh, sewer lines in the rear of the house? Not necessarily. If... You know, if he wants to put it in the front of the house so that the clean out is going to, it's going to be between your house and the city sewer up front, make sure they put in what's called a two way clean out. That way they can run cables either towards the street or back up under your house and clean it out in either direction. Uh, many times you'll use less cable in having to do that. And you can hide it a lot better. So it wouldn't bother me to have the clean out in the front. Just make sure it goes goes both ways. Both, both directions. Uh, 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 two-way or door at the same time? Say that again. Uh, uh, door, door, a door clean out or yeah. two-way clean out? Uh, That's right. Same term. That's right. Okay. Sam Johnson that uh, I twist his arm and he do put it at the rear of the house. Well, that's okay, too. Okay, my question, a question on that is, when they dig down in the ground to install it, because uh, I got a city sewer line that runs through my property at the rear of the house. Okay. Okay. Now, if he could some kind of way work it out in the rear, when they go down in the ground, would I be able to see my sewer lines that connect to the city sewer pipe? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know how it runs or which way the uh, the gravity uh, would go where you're located. Now, 
If my memory serves me right, aren't you up in Brownsville? No, sir. Oh, you're in Jackson? Gibson County. Gibson, Gibson County. County. Okay, all right. Um, you know, it, it's not going to really be necessary that you see the pipe. He'll tie the clean-outs into that, and uh, you just get that cap situated to where your lawnmower don't hit it, and um, right. you'll have access to that sewer line anytime you want it. Oh, okay, now, uh, I didn't throw this in, and I should have at the beginning of the conversation. Uh, I've been told it might be some roots in the sewer line at the rear of the house. Okay. That's that's why I brought up uh, when they get ready to dig in the ground, because I if if I want to kind of try to kill two birds with one stone. In other words, once they go down in the ground, do the digging, I want to be able to uh, if I have to uh, take care of the roots down there. Well, whether you take care of the roots or not, if you've got a solid plastic sewer line. Um, you won't have too much concern with the roots getting back in. Now, if you've got clay tile or orangeburg pipe that might tend to collapse over time, um, that's something that they'll probably address when they're putting that clean out in. So um, roots, in my opinion, wouldn't be a, a major concern uh, at this time. They'll, they'll take care of that because they just don't put them in the way they used to. Okay, well, the pipes are plastic. Yeah, well, that's good. Thing, whatever they do. Yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about the roots. Well, I mean, they, they got to uh, be, I mean, some, some eventually they're going to have to be taken care of. You know, you know what I mean? Well, uh, not on a solid system like that. Uh, you know, when you, uh, the roots will take care of themselves. You just want to make sure they don't get into the sewer pipes. And, if those are solid pipes, they're not likely to get into that. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. All right. Welcome back. All right. Thanks a lot for calling. Thank you, uh, caller. We appreciate that. Phone numbers, 731-423-8101, 1-800-304-1015. Text, 277-5155, or 4107560. We can take it any way you like it. Fried, sunny side up, scramble. We easy this morning. That's right. And just get it all mixed up. You we'll do it. it all. You got it. Yeah. You got it. Yeah, that, that, that's, that was a, an interesting call. I, you know, I, I think I know where my, my sewer clean out is. I got to thinking about that when he was talking. I'm going to go check it when I get home, make sure I, it is where I think it is. I don't know where yours is, and I've been all around your house. I, I, for think, I, I think when you, when you uh, it was right off of my original patio in the back, just yeah. up next near the house, and I think when you poured the new patio area, the new apron around the patio, mm -hmm. you relocated it, and uh, it's under a metal cap. I moved there. it over to the side. Yes, you did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that's right. We'll find out this afternoon. You never know when you're going to need one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was one of my uh, old callers from 101.5. Oh, yeah. I, I recognize I the voice, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was he was always Mr. All Right, All Right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Matthew, glad to have him calling he's in. A, he's a Gibson County Matthew McConaughey. You there know? you go. All right, there all right, go. all right. Yeah, yeah. good deal, man. Good deal. That's what we like to hear. So what is, what's on your mind today? What well, are we going to help folks You know, uh, I'm in the middle of a project right now that I've that, uh, been looking forward to. You know, I, I, I fuss about material availability mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And in this particular project, it, you know, I, I'm working in one of our little neighboring towns that uh, uh, it's an old family uh, situation, and, and the person that started it wanted to put one of the original buildings that started it all back the way it was. Hmm. And uh, one of the things they wanted to start with was put a new roof on the building. And uh, the roof was a redwood uh, shingled, split shake, heavy split shake roof. Right. And uh, it took us, because of COVID and Canadian borders, about a year <laughs> to get the shingles brought in. But uh, we finally got them in. Finally got the, the, uh, uh, the manpower set up because there's just not that many people. Yeah, that, that put on redwood shingles, and I'm, I guess I'm one of the few left that will will know how to put those on. And even then, with the the help, sometimes you have to re-educate them a little bit because it's just not a common thing. When when uh, the shingle world changed and architectural shingles became uh, the main 
uh, shingle of choice around here. He kind of eliminated redwood shingles mainly because they were so expensive. Sure. Redwood is, you know, it's just for the shingles alone, it costs on them between five and six hundred dollars a square. As opposed to how much for a. Uh, of about 80 and 90 bucks a square. Yeah, I was going to say 100, a, so a that, shingle. That, that you know. is definitely more expensive. <laughs> it, yeah. it is. But you got to have the look. You know, sure. some people that really, they don't mind spending the extra money to get the look that they want. Well, you know, you you and I are, uh, are gun smoke followers. Yes, we are. And the old houses that were out on the prairie, mm-hmm. you know, you may not notice things like this, but <laughs> I, I look at the architecture. I'm sick like that. You know, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, think so. I see how these little uh, shanties are put together. And right. You'll see some that have a like a thatched roof, you know, which is the grass. You have right. some that are mud mm-hmm. and dirt. Yeah. And then you have some that are boards. And I do mean just plank. And they are up on the roof, and they are lapped one over the other to where the water runs downhill. Right. And the producers never showed a, a bucket in the middle of the room <laughs> catching the water. Of course, no. they didn't have plastic Lowe's buckets back then. That's true. <laughs> absolutely right. Oh, uh, but <laughs> but uh, you, you know, you look at a, a shake roof, and you're looking at little pieces of wood, and you're trying to, and you're nailing them down. And there's big old gaps between each shingle, and one just appears to be loose laid over the other. Yeah. And you wonder, how does that not leak? Yeah. I mean, all it takes is just a good blowing rain to get that in there. Well, people don't understand what really goes into play in putting in a a shake roof on. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been working on that and and, uh, mixing a little new technology uh, you can't buy base sheets like you used to, and that's like an underlayment sheet of tar paper. Yeah. Uh, they have things now called ice and water shield. And I'll go a little bit more into that in just a minute. I know we've got to take a break right now, so let's take a break, and I'll come back and kind of tell you how you put a redwood roof together. All right. And then uh, maybe we'll take some more phone calls this morning. Sounds good to me. We'll be right back with Tricks of the Trade. We are going to be making the most classic bourbon cocktail known to man, the mint julep. Became the official cocktail of the Kentucky Derby in 1938. This cocktail is the Gold Rush. Today we'll be using bourbon instead. Today we're going to make an old fashioned cocktail. One of the most classic bourbon cocktails there are. And it tastes good for breakfast. With the Kentucky meal, we are going to swap out that vodka for Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Called the Boulevardier, and we beef up the bourbon because it's Kentucky, and that's what we do here. Now to do a modern twist. Sometimes it's hard to do a variation on a classic cocktail because a lot of them are so good. An obvious place to go from there for a variation is a bourbon shake. So now we're going to take that Kentucky Sour and put a very fun, modern edge on it. But if you are the adventurous type, it is a delicious drink. And that is what I call a bittersweet bourbon sour. Cheers. I talked to my doctor and he said he would highly recommend that I go ahead and get a shot. It doesn't only help me, it helps my family around me and all the people I associate with. So you're not only helping yourself, you're helping your neighbors also. Well, you know, I might have been a little bit hesitant to begin with, but after uh, looking at all the statistics and I don't see any uh, anything after you take the shot, everybody seems to get along with it pretty good. So you have a spot, take your shot. Hi, I'm Allie. At age two, my parents knew that there was something different about me. They were told that my life would not be typical. But Autism Society of America was there to help through all of my journeys. Help make a difference and make a donation. Go to AutismSociety.org. This is Arkansas. And so is this. And this. It's a place where your adventures can lead to wonders thousands of feet below ground, or to views high above it all. Arkansas is full of things you've never seen, 
and things worth seeing again and again. So if you're looking for a place to create legendary stories or just make lasting moments, it's all right here. This is Arkansas. This is The Natural State. It's Saturday morning. We're in downtown Jackson at Worldwide Headquarters of the Grace Media Group. Back home again with Tricks of the Trade, and here's John. Yeah, welcome back, everybody. Our lines are open, 423-8101. And uh, if you got something on your mind, or send us a text. And uh, let's see, that text number was 277-5155. That is correct, or the one that we're used to over our where we were is 4107560. Both of them come into the same spot, so uh, we'll just double dip and give you two opportunities. Well, that'll be all right. Yeah. That'll be all right. You know, uh, we need to talk about one of our fine sponsors this morning. Yes, we do. And uh, that would be West 10 Fence Company, mm -hmm. uh, Terry Hamlet and his uh, bunch over there on Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, they are experts in their field of putting up fences. And uh, if you need a fence around your house, no matter what kind it is, uh, They'd be the people to call. We use them exclusively ourselves and uh, at our company. And so I know firsthand what kind of job they do. So if you've got a need for any kind of a fence or a gate or anything to separate your neighbors, yep. that's what makes good neighbors is fences, <laughs> so they say. <laughs> good, solid ones. Yeah, good, solid fences. So, yep. uh Give the boys at West 10 Fence Company a call. They're local, and they're able to take care of all your fencing needs here in West Tennessee. Any kind of fence you want, pretty much, be it uh, residential, commercial, industrial, they can take care of all of it. Simply call them, 731-668-5959, or you can email Ricky in the sales department, Ricky Pennington at rpennington, the number one, at Yahoo. Dot com West 10 Fence Company. That's a good bunch right now, there. Yeah. Well, now, we're putting on a cedar shake roof. Yeah. And there may be some people out there who don't know what a shake is. A shake is a piece of a cedar log that is split by hand mm -hmm. to where it's rough and irregular on one side, just like you were to take a, a fro and and uh, split a log or a or a, a any means of splitting one, and it's real rough. And the other side of the shake is smooth because it's been cut uh, with, a, with a saw. And you can get them in uh, what they call starter shingles, which are thin. You can get them medium shake and heavy shake and uh, hand, hand split or machine split. There's all different kinds of ways of getting it. I'm just telling you, they're just a little pricey. Yeah. And yeah. uh, but to get the look that you want, and uh, the way they used to put them on is a little different from the way they put them on now, because used to you'd start out with a base sheet, which is like tar paper, but yeah. it was pretty heavy. And uh, but they don't do tar paper like they used to anymore because they took the good stuff out. You know that took tape, the tar out of tar they, paper. They, they took the, <laughs> the what's that a word asbestos? Asbestos. Yes, yeah. they. Uh, that was that was good stuff when used properly, but you know you can't eat that stuff like some people were, and that just kind of messed up the world, sure. you know. But anyway, uh, they've taken away the base sheets to get the good stuff, like you know I, I grew up with, and gone back with a product called Ice and Water Shield, okay. which is kind of like that, except it's got a paper on it, uh, and you pull it off, and it. It sticks to the roof. You start out with the ice and water shield. The, those good Yankee Americans up north learned about that stuff years ago when the uh, overhangs of their house started rotting out uh, because the ice and snow and water would get into the shingles and saturate it and stay there. And 
you know, when, when you got ice, sometimes water runs sideways. Yeah, for sure. And you get ice dams and things like that. So uh, it would it would ca- cause the decking to get saturated, and people didn't want that. So they started putting ice and water shield down, which gave you a better protection for your underlayment. Well, now we're doing that with our shake roofs. And uh, you can put this down, and when you actually got it down, you've got a watertight roof already before you even put the shingles on. Right. But then you put the shingles on. Yeah. And uh, you have to start out with what's called starter shingles, which are thin ones, because you want to get that first one hiked up in the air a little bit to where mm-hmm. it doesn't like it's flat when right. you start out. And then you'll start layering your shingles. Let me, let, me, let me ask you what may be a dumb question, or you may you may about to touch on it. I'm not sure. You start at the at the bottom and work toward the ridge top, or you start at the ridge top and work down. Oh, you start at the bottom and you go up. That's what I thought. Yeah. You know, they got about a nine inch lap on them. Yeah. And the crazy thing about shake roofs, if anybody's ever had an experience with them, you could go up in the attic and you look up and you see outside. You can see the sky. And you yeah. wonder how in the <clears throat> world does this roof not leak? Well, what you don't realize is you're not really looking straight out. You're kind of looking out from under a shingle where uh-huh. there's daylight because they don't lay flat on top of one another. <clears throat> right. And when it rains, that redwood will swell up. And it could just be raining cats and dogs, and uh, you won't get a drop through that roof. It's, that's amazing. Yeah, but that's uh, crazy. And then another thing people don't realize about those shaked roofs is about every uh, three feet, uh, well, I'm sorry, every 18 inches, you will lace in some more felt paper in between each run of shingles. So here you are driving nails through all of this. You think, well. With a hammer? With a hammer? Well, no. <laughs> oh, okay. You got me all on right. that one. All right. You know, that was, that was the, I, 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 uh, <laughs> I started out on this roof a few days ago, and, of course, to me, if you're good, you can just about drive the nails with a hammer yeah. as fast as you can do the gun. Not the actual act of pulling the trigger versus driving, but the preparation. I mean, with an <laughs> air gun, you got to get your compressor out, and then you got to get your hose out, and then somebody's always putting gasoline in it to fill it back <laughs> up, and then you got to find the right amount of na- the right kind of nails. And that's hard to find right now. And they got to be a certain kind. Yeah. They got to be galvanized or they got to be ring shanked because you don't want them backing back up in the wood. True. And when you add all that time together, I really believe you could just about put them down just as fast. But <laughs> if you'd have just got up there with your nail apron and drove the nails yeah. down, that's you, the way I learned. Yeah. Was you, to I mean, drive you'd, you'd feel a lot more satisfied at that point. Yeah. You did something with your hands. That's right, and you know, and and um, you know, you don't get near as many splinters as you yep. do sliding around trying to keep up with that nail gun. Yeah. So, but anyway, I would say by this, by about Tuesday or Wednesday this week, we'll have this fine building taken care of, and it'll be watertight. You'll still be able to go inside and look up and see through <laughs> it, but uh, I don't think it'll leak a drop, and uh, you'll have a a restored building that was put back the way it was with a little new ne- new technology, Yeah. but it'll be just as watertight as the original uh, one that was there. So, so the, uh, the ice and water shield being your new technology, right? That is, because that when you drive a nail through that stuff, yeah. it just kind of sucks up around that nail, and it won't leak yeah. like it would if you were driving through tar paper. Exactly. Let's, yeah. see, let's see what we got here. John, I am wanting to build a house in a slab, on a slab, I think you meant. Uh, I hear pros and cons from unqualified people. Could you go over some of the cons of a slab house? The cons? Yeah. The con of a slab house is, number one, you can't crawl under it. That's true. But neither can critters. Uh, well, that's, <laughs> that's true. You know, when you do a slab house, and I'm a remodeler. Yeah. So because of that, yep, yep, yep. I, I favor conventional foundations because I'm the guy that's got to come in after the fact when you've changed your mind and you want to maybe add on to your house or if something goes wrong like the plumbing, and then you realize you have no access to that. Um, 
We have calls every week on people that have slab leaks where the water lines under that slab get developed pinholes in them. Mm -hmm. And you cannot access those pipes. Uh, that's the biggest con I have right there. Uh, as far as your air conditioning, you're going to be limited to putting uh, your duct work in the attic. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's okay in the summertime because cold air falls. But in the wintertime, hot air rises. True. So it's going to be a lot hotter at your ceiling than it will be down where your head is, and yeah. especially if you've got higher ceilings. Uh, you've got cracking. If you've got ceramic tile, we get a lot of complaints um, where people have built houses in the next two or three years, that slab will crack. And wherever you have a crack on the concrete floor, if you have ceramic tile, it will crack there as well. Right. And it's because the contractor didn't put as much reinforcement in that slab. Having said all of that, I say the key to getting the best answer for your situation is the preparation. If you want to have a house that's like low on the ground, that might help with maybe your accessibility needs, you don't have to walk up steps and things like that, and you want to go with a slab house, make sure your contractor puts sufficient reinforcement in that slab to try to eliminate future cracks in the slab. Then again, remember, all concrete will eventually crack. The key is to tell it where to crack. Yeah. So make sure you put your control <laughs> joints and all in there to where it'll crack where you want it to crack, preferably under a wall, so that it doesn't mess up with what any kind of floor covering you may have. It's not a big deal if you got carpet. Yeah. But we don't have carpet around much anymore. Kind of gone out of style. Yes, yeah, true. Yeah. And uh, people have gone to ceramic. They've gone to LVP flooring. Uh, another thing that has become very important on slab houses now is make sure, while I just said you might like something low to the ground because of accessibility uh, needs, right? Uh, don't get them too low because... There are several lawsuits going on right now in, in other counties around us that uh, where they built them slow low and then you've got groundwater. Oh, no. Next thing you know, you're flooding your floors every time you have a gully washer wow. out there and it runs in the house. Or wow. it comes up through the crack that was in that concrete floor. There's a lot of little things to take care of there. So yep. um, if I were building a house, it would not be on a slab. Right. That's just me. That doesn't mean they're bad. That's just a preference. Yeah. But uh, I could go on and on, yeah. but it's kind of a little, it's a little repetitious on stuff like that. Yeah, but the house that I'm in now is 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 uh, on a slab, and the, the the ones we lived in previously were all on crawl space. So that took a little getting used to for me when we first moved over there. The biggest thing was the heat and air, because I really like, uh, what we used to call, I guess they still call it this, a gas pack unit. Right. Where everything is in the yard except for the ductwork. Right. And with a slab, obviously, you can't do that. you got to go with a split unit. You can at my house. You can at your house. You know, I live on a slab, too. Yep. yep. And I'm told uh -huh. it was one of the first slab houses that was built in Jackson in 1959. My heating and air ducts are underneath in the ground yeah they're concrete culverts in the slab in the slab wow that were put in piping concrete piping lined with tar and insulated by the dirt yeah. around it and uh my airflow is perfect uh <laughs> i don't have to if i were to if i were to get a little groundwater uh -huh. it'll act as a filter because any dust that comes through that pipe, yeah, it sticks to the water as it goes through. And I actually have a drain in there that I can open up in my garage and see if I've got any water in the pipes. And if too, I can just suck it out. Whoa. It, it's the technology in that was... Way ahead they, of its time. It was. Yeah. And it would be cost prohibitive to do that nowadays. Oh, I'm sure. But 
I'll never have a duck pipe wear out. <laughs> That's uh, true. It, uh, you don't have to worry about the wrapping coming off of no, it. No, man. You know, and, and critters, if they can burrow under there they can just stay there but they ain't coming in my house i hear that yeah. man that's that's crazy yeah thank you texter appreciate that hope that helped here's another text for you john this one uh says my floor is falling in the joists are bad for moisture damage should the old joist be completely replaced with new joists or the old joist nailed to a new one to give it support you know we have made a mistake in our construction world we have made things so tight they can't breathe and that has caused a major problem in foundations and houses uh, people say well we'll put a, a moisture barrier under the house well that's good but still your house is not breathing right so as the texture's problem you'll get a lot sometimes you'll get a mold growth or mildew growth Whatever you want to call it, it compromises the integrity of your floor joists to the point that they rot or the cellulose gets out of the wood and you can just reach up there and grab them and twist them in two. Well, you can go in there and replace them. It's a tough job. The problem that you run into is how to attach your floor that's on top of those joists back onto your new joist. Hmm. So the idea of what we call sistering, which is nail a new one on the side of the old one, is a good remedy because if you have enough of your old joists left, the old joists will still serve a purpose of holding the floor down onto your floor joist. Hmm. Uh, whereas a, if you sister one, you can't drive nails up into the subfloor. It just doesn't work that way. You might could screw it on there if you put little, say, two-by-two two ledgers on the side where you could screw through the side and then screw up through the bottom, right. make, making sure you knew what you were screwing and not, <laughs> next thing you know, run one up through the bottom of the floor and step on it. No, you don't want to catch that yeah. in the middle of the night. But, uh, you know, it, it's amazing. And it, and it normally happens on a lot of the older homes that had been retrofitted, added on to. We went into one the other day that they had had a little fire and we were putting it back together and all of a sudden the floor looked like it was sinking, had a little, looked like it was falling to the middle. Well, it had nothing to do with the fire, but uh, we got to looking at it and we cut a hole in the middle of the room because you couldn't crawl under the house. Right. I mean, I mean you, they were literally on the ground just about. But we open that up, you could take those joists and just take them and squeeze them with your hand. They'd crumble, uh. just sawdust. So you have to go in there, and, and there's several different ways of, of maneuvering that uh, remedy. But most of the time, it, it involves putting in beams that you didn't have before and sistering alongside of your old joist. So right. that that is something you can do that would probably give you the best results and be relatively affordable. There you go, Texter. Thank you for that. We appreciate it. One of our uh, one of our other great sponsors. We are fortunate to have three great sponsors, title sponsors here on, on yeah. Tricks of the Trade. And the sure. other one is a good friend of yours and a guy that I met years and years and years ago doing work at my house and became a friend also. It's mm -hmm. Stormy out at uh, Economy Siding and Windows. Yes, uh, yeah. We uh, we think a lot of old Stormy. He, uh, he gets in, he gets out, he's got a good crew, family-operated business, and uh, he's got his sons out there with him. And uh, if you want to be able to uh, get rid of the maintenance on the outside of your house, they are the ones to do. They know how to put it on. They know how to put your siding on. They know how to nail it. They know how to let it expand and contract. They know how to put the waterproofing efforts in there to keep things from getting in behind it and rotting out your walls. Uh, but what they've got into the last few years that I just say they're better than anybody else around here because I've seen the others, and it is better, and that is the replacement windows that they oh, put yeah. in. Yeah. They'll put those in. They'll get them trimmed properly, get them caulked properly, which is the best part of the job to make it look like it grew there. And uh, they'll come in and put those windows in and get them properly trimmed. You've got a maintenance-free outside. 
they can put you in new gutters too if you want them. Gutter guards, they sell a lot of those mm -hmm. and uh, uh, can take care of that. So, but we highly, and I highly recommend them. I mean, that's the only people I call. I'm sure there's other good companies out there, but when you get used to somebody and you know you don't have to go behind them and yeah. check this and check that, it, you get kind of comfortable. And if the price is right, you just stick with them. And that's what I've done with Economy Siding and uh, not only glad to have them as one of our premier subcontractors, but I have no hesitation to uh, recommend them to other people. So Absolutely. give them a call. Yeah, good folks. 731-422-3828 or economysiding.com. It's that simple. That simple? Yeah, good folks. They do, they do good work. Do good work. I, I, I just decided, and I made this clear with management years ago, that if I don't believe in them, I'm not going to yeah. hawk them. Yeah, well, it, it's hard. It's hard to 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 talk nice about somebody when you know something you shouldn't know. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. 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 I'm, I, yeah. Yeah. Plus, you don't want. I mean, you got a reputation of 140 years in that business. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just well, seems like yesterday. It seems like, <laughs> no, but I mean, no, seriously, you got a long, you got a long-term reputation of doing things properly uh, when you do it. So if your subs are not doing that when they come out there, that reflects directly on you. So naturally, you would use somebody where you don't have to worry about the quality of their work. That's right. Yeah, it, it, it's right. And and like West End Fence Company, we talked about earlier. There, mm -hmm. I use them. You know, uh, we'll use Economy Siding. And and they're just good folks, so that's just the way we roll. Absolutely, absolutely. You got some things there laying on the desk in front of you. Are we? Are you want to? You want to jump into into that? I thought maybe you br you brought that in here in the control room because something was awry in the back room. <laughs> well, you know, I, there's a couple of little things I wanted to talk about. I don't think we're going to have time to get all of them. But True. There was a time on the show when I talked about how tight is tight. Mm-hmm. And I was talking about plumbing at that time. Right. There, there's a common misconception, and it, I know how it started. It was back when everything was galvanized pipes. You had galvanized drains. You had galvanized water lines. And if you didn't want to leak, you dope up those threads, and you get your pipe wrench out. Uh-huh. And you tighten them down, just put all your weight on it, because tighter was better. Right. And then you didn't have to worry about leaks. Well, the world's changed when it comes to plumbing. Everything's <laughs> plastic now. And, yep. you know, you got PEX, you got you CPVC, you got PVC, you got to have glues and all that stuff. And if you decide to bear down and tighten up on something, you're going to make your leak worse. I mean, it just will not stop. And what... One of the big problems or, or common things in, in the household is to get a leak under your kitchen sink. Mm -hmm. Now, keep in mind, when you go and look under the kitchen sink, and many times it'll be the first time you did, and, and many of you will have metal traps underneath your sink, the old satin metal traps. Right. And those metal traps, when you took that nut off of them, it have a little rubber washer in there that uh, looked like a like a little gasket. And if you wanted something to leak, all you had to do was take your pliers and just bear down on that. And then because you would actually create, cause a problem. Right. But now they've got plastic traps now, and I've got with me right here what's called a just a common residential plastic P trap. Right. And if you're changing one out and putting that in, there's a couple of things you're going to need to know about it. And uh, one of the things is you've got pieces that go together and that are like they're beveled, made to go into one side. Like if you look at the side of, of this piece of the P-trap, you see where it's kind of beveled on one edge, and it's made to just set in the top mm -hmm. of the other. Okay. Well, you don't put a washer on that. I mean, it's already built in. Gotcha. So you've got your your nut here, which is also plastic, and if it just slides over and you put one in top of the other and you start tightening it up, 
you'll, well, if I can put it together here, <laughs> there we go. So when you get down to where it needs to be, all of a sudden you can't wiggle it around anymore. Right. Well, if you look at this nut that I put on here, you see these two little tabs on the side? Sure. That's really not meant for a wrench. That's meant for your fingers. Yeah. And if you can hook one finger over one tab and get your thumb behind the other one. Right. And you turn it to where it's snug. That's as tight as you need to be. Okay. If you put a wrench on that and bear on down, when the water starts flowing, you'll see the water start oozing up around the top of this ring. Because you got it too tight. Got it too tight. Got you. So, but then you have to then sometimes adapt this to tie this on under the bottom of your sink. And a lot of times that's a metal pipe coming down. Right. So you go back to the way things used to be, and you have these little rubber washers. And you would take, again, the nut and slide it up on the pipe. And I'll turn this upside down strictly for demonstration. You'll slide that up, and then you'll slide another beveled washer onto the bottom of it, like so. Right. And then slide it down. And I'm going to take this apart just so I can demonstrate something. Fingers and thumbs, nothing to it, right? Yeah, it comes <laughs> apart. Then if you're going into the top of that P-trap, you will just take and slide it on, uh -huh. and it will stay, and then you tighten down. Very simple. You don't even have to put pipe dope on it. You will tighten it down, and when you get it to where you feel it tighten up, just take your fingers and get it snug. Right. And you'll see that little blue washer down in there. Mm -hmm. But you have got a tight fit, and it won't leak. Yeah. Just don't put a wrench on it. And if you do, you're going to have a problem. you got a real problem, right. yeah. i got some more goodies over okay. here. But let's take another break, and then when we get back, we'll jump into something else over here. You got it. Be right back with Tricks of the Trade. Good morning. It's Saturday. We are lions. We bring hope where it's needed. We are a global force for good. Join the movement. Support causes that matter. Change lives. Change communities. Change the world. We can do more together than we can alone. Join in. Experience the joy of serving. Be part of the movement. Give back. Let's unite the world for good. We are lions. You can be too. Visit weserve.org. Hey Tennessee, I'm Kicks Brooks. You know, I've been blessed to tour this nation from sea to shining sea. And every time that bus rolls back across the state line, I'm reminded how good we have it here in our home state. Whether you like to hunt, fish, or watch wildlife, we got our Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency to thank for it. But before you follow that red dirt road to your favorite fishing hole or hunting spot, there's one thing you need, a license. Just visit GoOutdoorsTennessee.com and you can get your license in minutes. Looking for an easy way to compare bids from contractors you can trust? Search BBB.org for the type of work you need, then request a quote. Just click Get Quotes. You'll soon receive estimates from BBB accredited businesses. Businesses which meet BBB standards of trust. Peace of mind is just one search away. BBB. Start with trust. We're going to be making the most classic bourbon cocktail known to man, the mint julep. Became the official cocktail of the Kentucky Derby in 1938. 
This cocktail is the Gold Rush. Today we'll be using bourbon instead. Today we're gonna make an old-fashioned cocktail, one of the most classic bourbon cocktails there are, and it tastes good for breakfast. With the Kentucky Mule, we are going to swap out that vodka for Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Called the Boulevardier, and we beef up the bourbon because it's Kentucky, and that's what we do here. Now to do a modern twist. Sometimes it's hard to do a variation on a classic cocktail because a lot of them are so good. An obvious place to go from there for a variation is a bourbon shake. So now we're gonna take that Kentucky Sour and put a very fun, modern edge on it. But if you are the adventurous type, it is a delicious drink. And that is what I call a bittersweet bourbon sour. Cheers. Yes, you are listening to it at 101.5. Tricks of the Trade has found its way back home. Home again. Glad yes, to be yes, here. Yes, I'm yes. just glad to have a comfortable chair to sit in. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, yeah. I understand. And this is the first time in many, many moons on a Saturday morning we hadn't been doing a show and smelling bacon cooking. <laughs> now, that I could do with, you know. Well, yeah, that's, that's okay, but sitting on that porcupine up there, that um, just got a little telling you, little, little tough. That reminds me, i got to go back down there and get my, my cushion. I left it there yesterday. That's right. Yeah, yeah you can take that home now. I can, yeah. I don't mm -hmm. know where I'll use it, but I could take it home. Three sponsors, we've done two of them. We've talked about two of them this morning. Another one is, uh, is uh, one that uh, if you uh, go down and look up at one of their metal roofs, you're probably not going to see outside you like you not. did with that shake roof. That's right. That's, That's the right. folks at Quality Outdoor Products. Yeah, they're located up here in the fine city of Three Way. And uh, if you want a metal building, need a place to put your stuff, a little extra room, maybe just want to build a detached building all together, mm -hmm. put up an office somewhere i mean they are the people to go to to see about it they can help you plan your building and uh then just a matter of pushing a few buttons they'll start making uh the building for you and a lot of times within 24 hours you'll have it ready to go in the back of your pickup truck yep absolutely so uh you know that's just the thing to do and they're located up here in three ways so if you've got any metal building needs standing seam roofs uh, metal panels and of all kinds of colors and all the parts to go with it, the yep. screws to match, the caulking to fill in the crack, they can take care of it. You know, some people say metal metal buildings are cold when it's cold and hot when it's hot, but uh, they have this, uh, this AYR foil up there. It's a high-performance reflective foil uh, that insulates, and it keeps it from being too hot when it's hot outside and too cold when it's cold outside. So they got that covered, too. They do, and, uh, you know, I've been in some metal buildings that it's literally raining inside the buildings because mm -hmm. they sweat so much. Yeah, I remember but, one uh, of those. <laughs> they, can, they can take care of situations like that, so it's just something you got to see it to believe it. Go up there, and maybe they'll give you a little tour, and uh, you can watch it being made. It's just amazing how they bend all that stuff. Right, right there in three-way, the, uh, the area up north of, uh, of Jackson. It's uh, easy to find, easy to get out of, in and out of. You want to call them first and kind of get a little information, tell them what you're looking for. It's 888-485-5372, Quality Outdoor Products. Looks like we got about a minute and a half or so. Anything you got well, to wrap yeah, up with? Yeah, I'm going to talk about one little thing. Okay. You know, whether we're ready for it or not, the holidays are about to sneak up on us. Yes, they are. You got Halloween, then you got Thanksgiving, then you got Christmas. Mm -hmm. And uh, in all those seasons, people kind of get excited about putting up decorations. And you, they want to look at running extension cords and stuff. Get the right kind of adapters when you're using extension cords. This one I got in my hand is an outside one. It's properly grounded. This one is not grounded. That's for inside. We're going to go into detail about that a little more next week, but right now we got to get out of here. So we'll see you next week at 8 o'clock for Tricks of the Trade. We will guide you to a choice that makes the most sense for you. Call Benefits by Design today and learn how life insurance can